Well, okay, let's find out. The smallest or the largest thing. Let's take a guess, though. Smallest. The Planck length. Well, that's not a thing, really. That's just a unit of measurement. Okay, smallest thing would be, hmm, oh, man, an ant. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, obviously. Okay, uh, smallest thing would be, what, a particle? No, 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 no. Those are made up of quarks. Quarks? Are quarks made up of anything? I don't think so, right? Quark. I'm going to go with quark. We're going we're gonna to settle there. Okay, largest thing. Um, I guess it depends. How do you describe a thing? So the largest structure that we know of would be, what, the, the Lani Ikea superstructure? Uh, but then that's part of the cosmic web, which is part of the universe. The universe! There we go. Easy. Okay, let's, let's dig in. A three-story building is about 10 meters tall, six okay, yeah. times bigger than you. In the opposite direction, six times smaller than you, you get things like a cute squirrel, about 27 centimeters. Squirrels aren't cute. They're evil. I'm telling you, they're evil, dude. I had a squirrel chew through a gas can once. Why? Why would it chew through a gas can, of all things? It's small. There's no benefit. So the building is just as big relative to you as you are to a squirrel. You're in the middle. It's easy to huh. understand. In fact, you I've are got my in flower the mug today. In the universe. <laughs> Let's go on a fantastical journey together to the small and the large and see if it's really true. Okay, yeah. An A320. I heard um, through one of these videos one time that you can go way smaller than you can go bigger in comparison to a human. That if you take the largest things that exist and compare them to us and put that in a factor, that you can go much higher factor smaller than you can go bigger, which is just mind-blowing. Also, I'm sick, so don't mind the stuffy. 20 is 37 meters long. The Rufus hummingbird is around 7 centimeters. Both of these flyers are... I thought it said the ruthless hummingbird. <laughs> 23 times bigger or smaller than you, and both fly intercontinental distances. The tiny bird migrates between Alaska and Mexico. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. the hummingbird were the same size as the jet, it would circle the Earth 85 times every year. Jeez. Dinoponera, the largest ant in the world, is about 55 times smaller than you. Okay. Their small colonies have around 100 individuals, but no queens. Instead, they ruthlessly compete for status within the nest, which can reach 1.2 meters deep. If What's going on out there? A lot of noises in my house today. I don't know what's going on. Hmm, weird. If humans lived like Dinoponera, we'd be building towers of over 25 stories filled with offices and ruthlessly competing for status. And wait. <laughs> the deadliest and most annoying insect in the world is the mosquito. Don't 235 times smaller than you. While on the other end, the Empire State Building is about that much larger than you kind of unimaginable how wow. something this small creates so much devastation for something that big. Honestly, if we We're could fly, the though. borders of human perception now. Like coarse grains of sand, about three millimeters. Five hundred and... Three millimeters for a coarse grain of sand. Are they really that big? I, I don't know what kind of sand you're playing with, but the sand that I know is much smoother than that. Much finer. Fifty times smaller than you. You can feel their shape and roughness between your fingers, and if you focus, see them individually. We mix them yeah. into concrete that can hold up the tallest towers ever built, like the 828-meter-tall Burj Khalifa that's 500 times larger than you. If you were Dude, that tall, this is people insane, would be as small to you as grains of sand in your hand. Hey, be gentle. Anything smaller or bigger, and it becomes hard to grasp. A medium-sized city like Lisbon is about 6,000 times larger than yourself and permeated by a network of highways, roads, and alleys. Yeah. On the other end, about 6,000 times smaller than you, are your small arteries permeating your whole body. <laughs> Actually, you're this in the middle nuts. between your network of blood vessels and the network of a city like Lisbon. Jeez. If you think of a city as a living being, you find more and more parallels. 
That's really cool. A small alley is as small to the city as an arterial 0.1 millimeters wide is to you. Your Jeez. tiniest capillaries are to you what the pipes bringing water to homes are to Lisbon. That's going further, 100,000 <laughs> times smaller than you, we reach a typical skin cell about 30 micrometers in diameter. So now a we're at 100. Is half as big, and one of your red blood cells is merely 7 micrometers. They are as small to you as you are to the entire Tokyo metropolitan area, the largest <laughs> urban area in the world spanning over 160 the scales kilometers. of the universe. You are, just are so incredibly big, filled with so, so much crazy. complexity, so many different moving parts. Or are you just a cell in the human civilization's superstructure? Are you both? Our steps are getting larger and larger now. Germany is around 875 kilometers from north to south and the fourth biggest agricultural exporter in the world. Yeah. Rhizobia is a nitrogen fixing bacteria up to three micrometers long, and without Get out it, of here. that sort of agricultural production is impossible. Get out so, of we here. have a country and a bacterium depending on each other, and you are in the middle, both being roughly 550,000 times. Who are their writers? This is amazingly like the, the comparisons, amazingly done. Larger or smaller than you. What about the whole Earth? It's about 12,700 kilometers in diameter, about 7.7 .7 billion times larger than you. On the other side of the scale is corny bacterium, as little as 0.3 micrometers across, living on your skin and eyes, along with 100 billion other bacteria. More than we're 10 still times at bacteria. more than there are humans on Earth. When we're doing this comparison, we're comparing the size of the planet is roughly the same factor larger than us as this bacterium is smaller than us that means that to that bacterium the entire planet is basically us it, it's so mind-blowing it's so mind-numbing that the scales of the universe go as big as they do and as tiny as they do and those tiny scales exist everywhere like, uh, I can't even put it into words. It's so insane. Again, you're in the center, right in the middle of something so large that our civilization is a mere scratch on its surface and something so small and numerous, you never notice its presence even as it touches you. Yep. Does that make you feel small it or does. big? From here small. on out, your brain is breaking a bit. Four times wider than Earth is Neptune. A cold blue gas oh, my giant brain was already 9,500 kilometers wide. The largest planet, though, is Jupiter, 140,000 kilometers in diameter. A titanic abyss shrouded in terrible winds. You could drop Earth whole into its depths and it would simply vanish. <laughs> On the opposite scale, we find the deadly West Nile virus, 50 nanometers in diameter. No. Or one step down, the spike proteins on a coronavirus that open up cells for its RNA payload. Wow. They are as small to you as you are to the planet Jupiter. Jeez. You are in the middle between gigantic planets. Like you can't and even visualize this anymore. These tiny things. So deadly. Let that sink in. A tiny virus is taking over and killing lung cells up to 500 times larger than itself with the help of a tiny protein weapon. That's one thing too is everything in the universe that we know of exists on such extreme scales. What's to say that we're not a cell, so to say, uh, metaphorically speaking, in the larger everything? Our entire universe could just be a single cell moving on a scale that we can't even comprehend. Once again, metaphorically. What? <laughs> we would never know. It's just like just like the cells never know about the sun. That you know, that scale, it's completely inconceivable to get to the sun from a cell level here on Earth, right? <sighs> That's like you trying to kill a giant crisis. the size of the Burj Khalifa with a screwdriver. But the real boss of the it. solar system is the sun. 
10 times bigger than Jupiter, a billion times larger than you, controlling all the planets and source of all energy that drives life. A billion times smaller than you, clearly the boss of our body, is a DNA strand, containing no. all the information making your life possible. You're right in the middle between the most important factors keeping everything alive. Wait, 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 wait. So a billion times larger than us is the sun, and a billion times smaller than us is DNA, approximately. And the way that they're linking that, I just, I can't compliment these guys enough. From here on, things just kind of stop making sense. A billion they is already too much, a, but now long everything time just ago. seems to mean a lot. The supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star, is 14.5 billion times bigger than you. A hydrogen atom is 15.5 billion times smaller than you. Yeah, what? okay, sure. But the thing is, we're not even close to being done, what? and it's not impossible to get at least a sense of how these scale. The solar system is 22 trillion times larger than you. On the other end of the scale is the wavelength of low-energy neutrinos released from fusion reactions in our sun. About a hundred trillion of them are passing through you every single second, like ghosts a trillion times smaller than you, basically never hitting any of the particles inside you. My if God. you moved through the solar system in a straight line, you probably wouldn't hit anything either. Although things are beginning to get really weird now. A single proton no. at the heart of the hydrogen atom is almost exactly one quadrillion times smaller than you. <laughs> if the proton were as big as you, the hydrogen atoms would be taller than 12 Mount Everests. On the other end, we meet something that just breaks human brains. The incredible vastness of space. We just don't have no reference say. for these distances <laughs> at all. The distance to the closest star to Earth, Alpha Centauri, is not one quadrillion times in the other direction from the tiny proton, but 24 quadrillion. Space is just so large, it's kind of mean. Space and it goes on insane. like this. A quintillion times smaller than you is the strange world of the quarks. It's the the smallest, proton right? is not actually like a tiny ball, but kind of just a ripple on the surface of the ocean of quarks. Mm -hmm. Every moment, countless quarks pop into existence, along with their antiparticle enemies, before doing furious battle and annihilating each other in an instant. Yep. How many? Impossible to say, because the harder you look for them, the more quarks seem to appear. We're simplifying so much, it's like a lie anyway. However we choose <laughs> to illustrate this, it's yeah. wrong. What actually is a quark? What does it look like to human minds? Nobody knows. You can't observe As you one, sit right? here confused, let's look up again. The ocean of quarks in a proton inside a single atom of a single cell of your body is as small to you as you are compared to a sphere around 174 light years across containing about 16,000 stars. And this is just a tiny speck of dust to our galaxy. The yeah. Milky Way is close to one sextillion times larger than you. Our brains can't the handle end, this. We it's have particles a sextillion times smaller than is. yourself. Like the wavelength of high energy neutrinos released when cosmic rays hit our atmosphere. We're getting to the end. The observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter. Close to a billion, billion, billion human lengths. Hmm. But it's still finite. It's uh -huh. only 465,000 Milky Ways side by side. <laughs> if you were the size of our galaxy, That's the observable insane. universe would only be a day's drive across. On the other end of that scale, we have the tiniest particle ever detected. A proton traveling so close to the speed of light, it got squished oh, into OMG. a pancake. As small compared to you, as the whole observable universe is big to you. What? We're at the border no. of things that we have evidence really? for. Are you truly in the middle of everything? The Jeez. theoretical smallest physical distance is the Planck length, a hundred million times smaller than even the pancake proton. But we don't know if <laughs> it's real, proton. only that our theories of the universe break down here. Well, the Planck length isn't a real physical thing. It's just the point at which it makes no sense to measure smaller than that. How would you measure smaller than that? A distance smaller than that just doesn't have any meaning. And you couldn't make sense of it or actually measure smaller than that with si with what we understand today. Likewise, on the other end, does the bigness of the universe match the smallness of the Planck length? Well, actually, the universe could be considerably larger than that, but we will never know. Let's go back and look at the dimensions what was again. It?
it was like uh was it alan guth said that the the universe uh, according to cosmic inflation theory should be like forget how many septillion times larger than the observable universe if assuming that it started out as a point and then has been expanding at the rate calculated by the cosmic inflation theory so if that's true i mean it may as well be infinite <laughs> As far as we're concerned, or ever will be. There are so many big things, and so many small things wrapped up in them. The this universe seems to be exactly the right size, with you in the middle. I'm in the middle. How do you try to get it exactly right, say, when you have to make a big choice, like buying a new mattress? I wing it, <laughs> and have no regrets. <laughs> wow. This is just, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. This is just crazy, these scales. When you, when you think about the smallest scales that there are, and then imagine how that scale exists through all of the larger scales too. I would be really interested to see if humans were shrunk down to the size of the Planck length, and we traveled proportionately, to how we do today and say we had a little plank length uh scale jet and we got in it and we flew in a straight line how long would it take us to reach uh go from one end of the observable universe to the other it's got to be mathematically possible to figure out it'd probably be a number larger larger than we have names for it would certainly be a number larger than that huh I'm not that big of a nerd to do it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day.